You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. Um, I have with us Emily Wortman Wonder, and uh, she's a finalist for High Plains Book Fest uh, Award. So uh, we'll talk about her book in a minute. Emily, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? All right. Um, so I initially got my bachelor's degree in biology and um, from University of Colorado Boulder. And I worked as a wildlife biologist for almost 10 years. Um, worked in Durango and Glenwood Springs and Rayful, um, a little bit in Fort Collins and outside of Boulder. Um, and so, you know, Rocky Mountain West. Um, and, and I'm married to a biologist as well, which I think also kind of influences my, my uh, approach. But um, so I, I found, you know, very, very early on, my, my husband is a biostatistician. And he's also an ornithologist, but he's a, um, you know, we sort of have differing approaches. Like I'm, oh, how interesting that these two birds are doing this one unique thing. And he's like, we need to think about the data. You know, we need to generalize and, and see what patterns there are. Um, you know, and then because of my background, after I got my MFA, I worked also with scientists um, as kind of, you know, professionally. Um, and I found, you know, a similar tension as existed between my husband and I exists in a lot of biologists. Like they are, on the one hand, they have this mandate to quantify, to, you know, draw patterns, not anthropomorphize, all that stuff. But then most of the biologists I know, um, and even some, like I've worked with mining engineers and I, I see it in them as well often, um, just kind of this drive to, um, to connect with, with nature, with, with places. Um, mining engineers sometimes they are really excited by like structures, <laughs> like dams and, and like the mine head and the shaft, you know, all the, but still it's, there's something, it, it, there's some spooky thing about mines that, that, that hits that same place that being able to connect with, with animals. And um, I mean, I just remember doing some of the ornithology field work in my, in my twenties and just like, it's, it's a sacred space to be able to like, look at a nest when it's active and to sort to see to be enter into, we're not really invited in, but we enter into the, the home space of, of these other creatures. Um, you know, so there's this tension between wanting to be very businesslike and then wanting to connect spiritually, really, with, with the other. And um, that's where a lot of my stories come from, is this tension. Um, okay. So um, your book is a collection of short stories. Yes. Um, tell us about the book. <laughs> um, so this book is a, the work of 20 years. Um, I started writing these when I started my MFA program, and the most recent one was published uh, just a year before um, the book came out. Um, and they are, by and large, they are about wildlife biologists. They are about people who work in rural towns um, in the West and also the Great Plains, um, Nebraska. Ohio is not the Great Plains. There are a couple stories set in Ohio, but it's still that they, there's this still this tension between um, sort of what's happening in the larger landscape and then what's happening in the the interpersonal space between people and between people and animals. Um, and it took 20 years to get stories. Like I'd had other stories that were published and, and won awards, but didn't make it into the book because they just weren't sort of in that space. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, commented that uh, sort of a central uh, tension in your in your collection it had to do with raising children to love nature while honoring their suburban lifestyle. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is um, a tension of my own life. I have um, uh, my husband and I too now work at the University of Colorado Denver. So we live in South Suburban Denver and we have for the past, um, gosh, 13 years now, 12 years. Um, and so we essentially raised our kids here. My oldest is in college and my youngest is in high school. Um, and, you know, you move into a place, you choose it for the schools, it's close to the light rail, seems like great. And then you're like, 
oh, also we're in the Cherry Creek School District, which is this, you know, rich, wealthy, suburban high school district that is, um, you know, has certain pathologies and, and, and certain values that we didn't maybe think out ahead of time. And so our kids have oddly flourished in this, in this environment. And both, both of us are sort of like, <laughs> where the hell are we? Um, <laughs> how do we get out of here? Um, and so that's been, that's been a central tension of my life. And it definitely comes through in several of the stories. There's a lot of um, kind of, uh, there's at least two stories, um, Endangered Fish of the Colorado and um, Trespassing, which deal directly with a mother's um, sort of desire to connect and to, to introduce her son in particular, but her children to the, the wild world and have them really resist that. And, and, and it, it kind of flummoxes the character and then also um, it, it almost leads to a tragic inability to connect with her kids, um, which I would say that's adapted from life. It's not quite true to life, but it, it, there are elements, yeah. It, it it sounds like your your book deals with a lot of things that they don't really tell you um, about when you're in graduate school studying biology. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you want to be a wildlife biologist, you're going to have to travel every six months for the next 10 years. Um, and if you want to have kids and a family, you're going to have to um, get some other, get sort of a, for a while I worked jobs, I called parabiologists, parabiology jobs, because I was you know, assisting people working in offices, um, communications manager, um, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, short stories. Well, oh, where did the title come from? So it's the it's the initial story. Um, it's called "Not a Thing to Come for You." It's about um, uh, a woman who's working as a nurse in a town sort of based on Rifle, Colorado, um, and she uh, a a person kind of a, a trainee, a train hobo falls off or gets pushed off a train in her that goes through her town and so ends up in the hospital where she works and she kind of develops this obsession with this woman um, and what she perceives <clears throat> excuse me as this woman's freedom compared to her own very structured um, approved life um, and it becomes a way of her um, really sort of unhealthily uh, pushing this woman to maintain her freedoms rather than to try to become a respectful um, citizen, like the hospital is trying to kind of rehabilitate the woman. Um, so that's, that's where the story title or the, the short story and, or originated from and that's where the title came from. And then that was, um, it's one of the bigger sort of weightier stories in the book. And so that's kind of why I chose it. Oh. Plus it, it gets at a lot of the tensions and the stories, this tension between, you know, the comforts of home and, you know, they kind of would, I don't want to call it the cute hipster lifestyle, but sort of that suburban, like having access to bookstores and breweries and, um, and then being out in the wilderness doing wilderness work, which you really don't have access or certainly in the nineties, you didn't have access to, um, to that kind of lifestyle. Like the, the, you had sort of had to make a choice, even though it felt like they were related, it was not, um, physically, we're not being in the same place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it, is there a sense that in the wilderness, there is nothing to comfort you or the, the suburban comforts? Yeah. Or it's a different kind of comfort. Um, and definitely I've always been struck by one of the things I like about the wilderness, but it's also sort of terrifying is how it, it doesn't care. It, there's, mm -hmm. you know, you're just one of many organisms out there and, and you have to fend for yourself and there's no, it's beautiful, but it's not beauty for you. It's beauty for itself and storms move through trees fall down. Yeah. And mm. if you get stranded, mm. too bad. Your food for the next thing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us who would be the audience for this book. Well, definitely um, people that have really responded strongly are um, people who, like myself, you know, just kind of rage at development. Why do we have to do this? Why can't we just like enjoy the world as it is? Um, and people who are, would want to get back to a, like a 
better, healthier relationship with nature, like as a society as well as individually, but also under, or see sort of the struggles, like see the, the conflict between, um, if you live in a remote area, there's a lot that you have to give up or that you don't have access to. Um, and that can be a real struggle. And then if you, a bunch of people move to a really remote area, it's not remote anymore, it's something different. Um, and, then, and then finally, um, parents, probably in particular mothers who struggle with the tension between um, wanting to do the best for your kids and then wanting your own life as well and, and, and how to balance those and how to let your kids be the people that they need to be even if they aren't the people that you maybe thought they would be when they were one year old and could be anything. <laughs> well, that's, you're tapping a universal theme there. Yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. I know. I I think of all the parents in the world who wanted their kids to be a certain religion, and I'm like, I see your pain. I totally <laughs> don't relate to that specific element, but that's sort of what it feels like. It feels like they have rejected my values sometimes. Oh my. <laughs> Although yes, they. My oldest is actually he likes to backpack. He's not. He's not an entire Philistine. But. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, and my youngest may get there as as well. Who knows? Yeah. Right now, she's very, very invested in her, in, you know, high school environment, which is as it should be for. It is, yeah, so, it, yeah, it really is, and, and there's still time and still hope. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today, and uh, uh, best of luck with your uh, writing career. This your this book has been very well received. So, uh, yeah. Thanks. I feel thankful for that. Thank you. thank you. And thank you so much for the, the interview. It's, um, it's one of the best things actually about publishing this book, which um, has come, you know, it's 20 years of work. So it's come long after the shiny dreams of being a brilliant author. I, you know, maybe have that a little bit still, but, but for me, it's about like, what doors does this open? Who does this introduce me to? Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.